Good morning, you beautiful people. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day today. Welcome to the top five worst things about Call of Duty Ghosts. Taking a retrospective look at Call of Duty, I am going through all of the Call of Duties in recent years and finding out what we love and what we hate about them, what we want back, and what we never want to see return ever again. Enough chit chat, let's get right into it. Number five, we have the default maps. This is probably one of the main reasons people left this game, as well as the other four things here on my list. The default maps, the main issue with them is that they were so, so big. I will defend them by saying the layout specifically of these maps wasn't necessarily the issue. It didn't have, uh, we didn't have an issue with how the maps flowed in and of themselves, uh, but the fact that it was only 6v6 at launch on the 360 and these maps were completely insanely huge made it very, very, very slow paced and boring. You would be walking for ages, trying to strategically think, where are they spawning? Where are they coming from? Walking, walking, running, aiming down sights, being ready. You would die and all of those seconds spent, all of that time spent looking for an enemy is just wasted and you feel so bored because you didn't see any action. This was no doubt a retaliation from Black Ops 2 stupid, simple three lane maps. However, Infinity Ward might have gone a little too extreme here. Number four, we have man's best friend who's so cute and adorable. I hope you die in a fire. I hate the guard dog. Riley, I get it. I understand they needed a gimmick. They needed some marketing stuff. They needed a cool different kill streak. Having a dog. Everybody loves dogs, right? Ghost, you made me hate dogs. I don't like dogs anymore. I'm just kidding, of course. But these guard dogs, there is something inherently unbalanced about them. And that is the fact that they instantly kill you and they follow around an enemy, enemy player. So what would normally happen is you would be in a gunfight and you would win a gunfight completely fair and square and you would be about maybe 10 to 15 bullets down from that gunfight. Now you have to deal with a dog. Well, the dog doesn't have the normal health as a regular human being, so you would need to finish your clip off into the dog, then you would need to reload, and then probably go another clip into that dog. Now that is a lot of time, and it's a lot of energy focusing on something that you don't need to focus on. And if you don't manage to kill the dog, it is going to one hit kill you. And there's no way to distract it, there's no way to get it off of you, it's forcing you into that engagement, and you are either going to kill the dog, which rarely happened because of the extreme health, or you're going to die because of the one hit kill. Out of all my time playing Call of Duty Ghost, the guard dog is the one thing that can't really be fixed by a hot fix or an update, it just needs to be removed from the game. Coming in at number three, it really does pain me to say this, but the time to kill. I recently went back and played Call of Duty Ghost, and holy crap, you drop like a sack of potatoes. You just hit the floor. Personally, I do like a faster time to kill, and I love the fact that in Call of Duty Ghosts, the, f the person who shoots first, who spots you first, and gets shots on target first is always consistently the one to get the kill. That is how first person shooters, especially Twitch first person shooters, should be. However, this is really quick and I think just one extra bullet at a medium to long range would be all we needed, would be all we needed in order to make this a little bit better and feel a little bit more, uh, not realistic, but more manageable, understandable. I mean, there's straight up times where I was like shot from with an AR from a medium to long range and I'm like, who sniped me? Like legitimately thinking I got sniped, but no, it was just somebody with an R5 who just headshotted me. So yeah, that could use a little tweaking here in Infinite Warfare. Uh, however, that is the number three spot. Moving on to number two, this is a, a big number two. Uh, that is a pun intended for you uh, children out there. Uh, this is going to be the IEDs, Explosives, and Danger Close. I sincerely hope whoever put Danger Close in Call of Duty Ghosts is looking for a different job. Again, with that hyperbole, I, I don't think they should have lost their job. But seriously, nobody wants Danger Close. Us players, there is not a player alive except for trolls who want Danger Close in this game. 
especially combined with the IEDs, especially with the IEDs pre-patch. When this game first came out and people discovered IEDs, they were completely unavoidable. They were literally a free kill 80% of the time, maybe even 90% of the time. It completely ruined this game, and it's why a lot of people outright quit this game, because those first couple months, IEDs were everywhere. I know this is never going to happen, but explosives and grenades outside of tactical grenades, in my opinion, don't have a place in Call of Duty. Call of Duty is a shooter. Uh, a C4, a grenade, takes very little skill. It's an area of effect. You have to just get lucky. You have to throw it in the general direction. I don't see how skill is involved there. Not to mention getting casketed or noob tubed from across the map because somebody has danger close. It's incredibly infuriating. It's not fun using explosives, it's not fun dying with explosives. Before we get to our number one pick, we have an honorable mention, and that is going to be some of the support kill streaks. Uh, the support squad mate should never be able to kill you. He should always be just completely passive with his right shield. That's it. Uh, the ballistic vest is completely trash. There shouldn't be jug in any way, shape, or form in this game. Uh, ballistic vests really dictate how gunfights go, especially with these incredibly fast timed kills. It makes the person wearing the ballistic vest have an insane advantage. As well as, finally, the Oracle is the worst support kill streak. It's worse than the MP. Okay, it's may it might not be worse than the MP, but it's very, very difficult to counter because while we do have blind eye, uh, the perk system, which is another honorable mention here, we need to have focus as well, as well as blind eye if we want to counter the oracle. The oracle is bad because uh, Call of Duty is all about positioning and awareness. Somebody calls in the oracle, everybody on the enemy team's position is made aware to the enemy team, and that is a game changing. It's too game changing for somebody who can't string together kills. But anyway, moving on to number one, this is going to be the fact that there are so many campers. And I know what you're thinking, this is a very unusual one because this is player dependent, right? It's not game dependent. Call of Duty Ghost doesn't inherently uh, reward campers. However, Call of Duty Ghost allows players uh, to camp. And it is something that's very concerning to me. Uh, in Black Ops 3 and Advanced Warfare, with the sudden movement, campers are having a very difficult time, and I do want to make a video specifically why they're having a bad time. However, they seem to be very abundant here in Call of Duty Ghosts. Bushwookies, IEDs, ghillie suits, all of this sort of stuff is very, very infuriating, especially after coming off of Advanced Warfare and Black Ops 3, where it seems like everybody is just on a trampoline jumping around and you're reacting to everybody rather than trying to kill a camper. I haven't killed a camper in Black Ops 3 in quite some time. However, to bring this good news uh, to this, campers are very, very easy to deal with here in Call of Duty Ghosts because of the fact that is it is a strategic and a smart uh, Call of Duty game. The positioning, like I said, is very important, and because you know where the campers are going to be positioned, you have a big multitude of ways to deal with them, especially with the fact that these maps are very complex and very open. You have a lot of options, and that is a very good thing. However, after everything, experiencing everything again in Call of Duty Ghosts, it is by far the campers that are the most, uh, the worst thing about Call of Duty Ghosts. So anyway, that's my thoughts on Call of Duty Ghosts. Those are the worst things I have to say about Call of Duty Ghosts. What are your thoughts about Call of Duty Ghosts? What are your worst things that you hate about this game? Thank you guys so much for watching, and until the next absolutely beautiful Call of Duty morning, I'll catch up with you guys later. And as always, have a great day.